any here and I need to drain the fluid and put fresh fluid in it. So first thing before you drain fluid, like I said before, there's your fill plug. You need to make sure you can loosen that. So it's a 10 millimeter Allen. So they're on there pretty tight. So break that loose before you do the drain plugs. So well, I've better I shot uh, once I kind of get this up on the hoist, but there's uh, two drain plugs. One underneath the forward part of the front diff. And then one in the rear diff. So I'll get you a better shot of those once I lift this up. But just wanted to make sure I could break that loose first before I go and drain it. So, and basically the, the idea for filling is you need to have this setting, setting level. So we'll probably do that in the air on the load leveler. I'll pick it up to drain it. Anyways, and so you put the two, drain it out of the two drain plugs, put them back in, and then undo the, the fill plug and you're gonna pretty much fill it up with fluid until it just comes out of the uh, fill plug there. I, th I think the official spec is some small distance slightly below the lip, but you can pretty much fill it up and, until it starts pouring out of there, and then, then you're good. the uh, O&E up on the trans jack here so I've already got it drained good thing is fluid came out so that's certainly a good thing um, so these are the two drain holes I was mentioning uh, I probably can't see that let me grab a light There's one, and there's two. So, drain both of those, and uh, how I did it was, as each one, I opened it up, I kind of tilted it back, tilted it forward to make sure to get all of the old fluid out. Have the fill port open up there, so I'm going to make sure it's level put a level on top and then uh, also probably put a level there and get the side-to-side uh, -side tilt right. I was going to use this funnel. Used to have a hose which I could then just run down to the fill port and it's got this quick on and off but I can't find the hose. So might use this fluid transfer pump, which is for doing uh, like boat out drives and stuff. It's just kind of time consuming because you you got to sit there and pump. That's I mean this is handy for doing the last liter of it, um, but not so much for doing a whole bunch of them. So I I may not do this tonight. I might go and and buy a get another funnel tomorrow it's getting kind of late the joys of having a unorganized crash 
Um, also, forget if I said something about this. So there's this plastic bushing in there. It's really cheap to replace. So replace that because it gets worn from the clutch fork because that's that's what the clutch fork pivots on. And then, you know, grease that. This is the new throw out bearing. So this is the metal faced one. I believe you can buy it from 034 instead of the, uh, let me show you the other one. The one that comes with the clutch kit is plastic. Oh, no, it's actually over here. So literally the same thing, except plastic on the end instead of metal. I mean, this probably is completely adequate, but when there's a metal part, why not do that? Um, I don't know if the metal is technically any louder or not. And it's flat. Instead of, there is a slight profile to that plastic to maybe engage with the clutch forks a little better, but I'm going to put the metal one in there. I had it sitting around with a 20 valve 5 cylinder clutch kit. So put it on and then I'll order another from 034 to replace that one. So once I fill it up with fluid, then it'll be ready to go in. All right, I went and bought myself a new funnel. Exact same one as I had before, but with the hose. Five bucks well spent. And here's the Fuchs Titan Cinto Fluid, SAE 95W80, and this is the GL5s, but pretty much from every thing I've read from Scott at Advanced Auto Motion and other things. You know, the GL5 rated Fuchs is pretty much compatible with the GL4. And so you see I'm down to 700 milliliters, so 300 out of that, and then I put two full ones. So this is right at the stated capacity of 2.3 liters. I don't know if you'll be able to see there, um, but you got the fluid level right up to the bottom of the drain plug. I don't really know what I was doing when I ordered uh, five liters of this. I don't know what spec I was reading, but whatever. I. Uh, Guess I have enough for another fluid change down the road. Or O1E for the or Quattro or whenever the 20 valve goes in. So I'm gonna seal this up and get this ready to go in. Alright, time to do some wiring. So I think in my first video I'd shown you this. This is a connector that I thought was the right size. The F-125, but it's not. Way too big. So, ignore that. Um, so, this is the... This is what is on the automatic. The I don't know if this is the F-125 or the shift selector position, whatever. So, I was in a bit of a rush. You can apparently get this connector from the dealer. You can get the pins from DigiKey or Mauser, but I didn't want to wait on the dealer. So I found one of these shift selectors on Amazon for like $30. So just the, it was a little more expensive, but $30 and I was able to have it here like the next day. So I'm gonna use, I cut this off, so I'm gonna use this. And this is just going to allow us to splice into the auto uh, wiring harness. And there's two things you got to do here, which I don't know if you can read my notes, but so you need to jump or two pins for the starter interlock. If you don't do that, then your starter just won't even start. And then the uh, next two over is the reverse light. So. I think I showed it earlier. Got the reverse light. And I got you know your standard pretty much fuel injector connector. That'll connect to that. So I will uh, depin what I don't need, splice the two together to 
do the termination for the interlock and then add the reverse light connector. I'm going to mock this up. I don't know if, you know, this, I don't know what, 14, 16 inch pigtail is going to be long enough to reach on the transmission. So I might have to add a little extra length, but we'll see. So checking out the harness here on the trans. So reverse light here. So this is just with the stock length. And I think that's going to be plenty. There's there's definitely some some slack in the uh, harness there. So that should be enough. And then, so if you look on your connector, there's a you know, pin numbers. So nine and 10 get jumper together. That's the starter interlock. So just used a little closed end splice there. Put some heat shrink on it. Uh, I like to use the marine heat shrink because it has an adhesive on the inside there. So it makes it stick and then also kind of waterproofs it. You know, similar to you know what the pros use with ray cam and stuff. You know, this this all is gonna be inside of a uh, snake skin anyways, like you saw before. So I'm gonna leave these at this length. I'm gonna go put on the uh, reverse. So yeah, the reverse is seven and eight on here. And it doesn't matter what orientation you plug it in there. It's, you know, just open or closed circuit based on whether you're in reverse or not. And here we go. Nice professional looking harness. And uh, it'll plug right into the automatic transmission harness. So, I think that's my last thing to do before throwing this transmission in. Let's do it. Okay, getting ready for the trans. I want to uh, prep the bell housing bolts. So, the Bentley has this nice diagram that shows you the position because they're all pretty much different lengths. So you wanna make sure that they're in the right spot. But, Howard pointed out, that one of these is wrong for, I mean, these specs are for the auto and it changes with the uh, manual. So number six is originally on the auto, an M10 bolt. So it's the bottom starter hole. And here you see, it's actually a threaded M10. And if we go look at the O1E, That is not threaded, and that's an M12 hole. So, number six, you need to convert to a M12 with a nut, um, because if we look at the starter, the uh, top one is threaded, the bottom one is not, because on the auto, it used to be just threaded in the trans. So, the bottom starter one, you will have to uh, use a butt. Uh, a nut and a bolt. Um, not sure on the distance just yet. I will uh, figure that out. All right, came across another issue. So, bell housing bolt number three on the auto. It's an M10. Slides right in there. But if we go into the same spot on the O&E, also M10, but the head of the bolt is too big. So I don't know what they were expecting here. I don't know if, uh, I mean, on the engine side, it's definitely not an M8. So I don't know if I have a M10 bolt with a smaller head than that. I don't think you can really get much smaller. So, I don't know if maybe the idea is you have a spacer. So, you can see there's a little lip there. So if I put, I don't know, what's that, a quarter inch, 30 millimeter spacer, then that would have a straight approach, I think. So, 
This might be something I just figure out as I get it in there. Oh. Yay for issues. And I can count, kind of. So this was another trick Howard told me. So as, as you're going through all your bolts there, you should label them. So we'll just, as we go to put them in, we'll just grab one, you know, peel the tape off and make sure to put it in the corresponding thing. Um, as you notice, number six is missing. I still haven't figured out that size. That's the one that's going to be an M12, not an M10. I'm going to go measure that now and I'll let you know. All right, now I can count. So found a nut and bolt that I think will work for number six, 95 millimeters, M12. Uh, hopefully that works. It seems like it's long enough, but that might be just something I gotta figure out real time. I might need to step it up to, this is a 110, might be too much, but looking on the trans side, there's plenty of space to, if I do have to use something too long, but hopefully 95 will work. I might be able to find 100 in my bolt bucket, but we'll see. Transmission is in. The car is, you know, I think it's officially a six speed manual. Don't have all the bell housing bolts in just yet. Got a couple on the top. Made sure to get this one down here while I had the uh, front of it up off of the subframe just because it's really hard to reach. If not, Trans mounts in, those worked perfectly. We'll have to check the linkage. I forget if I ever showed you. So there's the, how I've got the uh, two different, uh, I guess, rubber boots mended together to fit that. So still a few things to do. Well, a couple things to note on this side. So make sure you plug back in your speed sensor. Here's my F125 switch. That'll plug into my harness there. Don't need that anymore. I'll just tie that up out of the way. Speed sensor right over there, which Harness is somewhere. I think that's right there. So, still need to. I got that engine mount in. Still need to install the starter and then put that engine mount back in. Then we got to rebuild the axles. But I can see the light, light at the end of the tunnel, and transmission actually went in pretty smooth. Um, I just had to, you know, grab the inner hubs and twist it just a little bit to get the input shaft lined up. But then it slid right in. Actually, kind of slid in easier than Howard's did, um, but we got Howard's in. Eventually, so.